Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome. Today, I get to introduce you to one of my favorite people in the entire world, and I am not exaggerating when I say that. This is a very, very special person. His name is Dan Rondo, and he is the graphic design guru and brand strategist behind My Marketing VA. He partners with digital coaches, speakers, and trainers in creating premium, and I mean premium, graphic design through their brand story while allowing them to focus on building their six and seven figure businesses. I will share with you that Dan is my graphic design artist. That's why I know how premium his designs are. He has been telling my brand story for several years now, and he literally knows my brand better than I do. (laughs) Dan's background is he spent 12 years in the pharmaceutical industry. Now you might be like, how do you spend 12 years in the pharmaceutical industry and be the this amazing brand designer. Well, like many of us, we've had previous careers where they didn't really use our amazing expertise to the best. But Dan's so good, he can just do anything. Now he's doing what he loves and what his true uh, heart's desire is. Dan's brand and design eye, yes, and he definitely has that, learn him away from that, oh, you know, what we all think of as a safe corporate position, but really aren't anymore. Daring him to go head first into true entrepreneurship. And we're going to explore a little bit of that today with Dan. Um, And Dan's genuine heart and investment in his clients' businesses sets them both up for success. And Dan, thank you for setting me up for success and my business up for success and just bringing so much joy to my life and all my clients' life. Well, thank you very much for allowing me into your world and allowing me into your business because uh, it's it's the ride that keeps on going, that keeps on growing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it definitely is. And um, I just want to, before I start interviewing Dan, I want to share with everybody um, one of my tips on finding a really good independent contractor, freelancer, graphic designer, virtual assistant, whatever you're looking for, is to find your top three that you think you would like to work with and then give them a task to do that you would have them do when they're actually working for you and see, give them the identical, each of them, the identical task, the identical instructions and see how they do. Because, you know, I'm used to working with women. Most people that go through my training program are women. Dan is one of six men who have ever since 2008 gone through my training program. When I first met Dan, I thought, there's no way he could understand my design. It's very feminine. It's all about women. It's all about crazy towers and stuff like that. But I was so impressed with Dan during our conversations that I wanted to see what he could do. And I, and Dan didn't know any of this, I don't think in the beginning. (laughs) And I had two other women that I had, that I was considering. And one was really in the lead. And um, I gave them all the exact same assignment. It was to create a, an inspirational image for me. I gave them the exact same uh, task. Is that I literally copied and pasted. And Dan's blew me away. Like I said, he understood my brand immediately better than I could even describe it. And um, one of the other women did a good job. And I would have hired her if Dan hadn't blown me away so much. And the one that had been in the lead that I would have just automatically hired if I hadn't done this task totally blew my brand. I mean, not even close. I actually had to have a conversation with her because I thought maybe she misunderstood what I'd asked for, but she didn't. And she just, she didn't have that 
design eye that Dan has. So that's a big tip for anybody looking to hire anyone. Um, and Dan, you've only, I mean, grown tremendously from there. Cause how many years ago was that when you well, first started your on five years coming up? Five in years. October. October. Yeah. October. 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 It's going to be five years that I've been, it, I've been in your program and yeah. never a day has ever gone where I've, I've looked back on that because the amount of growth that I've had since I started and the amount of confidence that I've gained in my own abilities to do things. I, I mean, I mean, I've needed pushes, you know, that very much. I've needed quite a bit of pushes, but. And if, we all do. We all need coaches. If there's anybody out there who's listening to this and says, I, I don't need a coach. You're kidding yourself. No, you can't I, see, you don't even know what you don't know that you could do if you had a coach. Right, Dan? I, I don't think I could ever go without coaching again. That's like the one thing that is built into a budget completely for me going forward. There's always has to be coaches. And now I'm even, I'm even looking at two coaches now too, because of the <laughs> we're going. Yeah. Yeah. And people might go two coaches. Well, as your business grows and you specialize, you know, you, you, you're like, oh, here is this one piece that I'm still really struggling with. Like, for example, money mindset. While there is a money mindset in my program, that is not what I specialize in. So have you worked specifically with a money mindset coach, Dan? Is that anyone you've worked with? Yes, I have. Yeah. And so have I. Joe Burns is who I worked with. How about you? I worked with two. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, if anybody's listening to this, I have already interviewed Joe Burns. So uh, just search on the podcast for Joe Burns and you'll find out all about Joe. He's an amazing money mindset coach. But, you know, a, a business coach originally who, well, I'll let you say, what would you recommend to people while we're talking about business coaches when you're, when you're, you know, still like, I don't know how to grow my business. I'm not sure where I'm going. What kind of business coach should they look for um, based on your experience? Well, one that's definitely been in your shoes before, because I had, I mean, I've gone through several coaches already too. And the first coach that I had was in the position that I was before working at J-O-B, working to build a, a side business and then make it into what it is today. And that's where I started with. And I related very much to her. We, you know, we worked very well together. And then as I started developing where I wanted to go, which initially started as in social media, as Kathy said, I started with her stuff. And, you know, I, I said that now's the time to change transition into a different coach and one that specializes in social media. And that's, been my same coach that I, I currently have as well. And she really has gotten to know me and my business and all my little inner twerks and tweaks that <laughs> done. knows where I need the push knows where I'm, I, I need that extra set of eyes to say, yep, look over this. And without her, and, and without all the support that I've had from everybody else, I, I mean, you, that's what you need. You need that core support team behind you. Yeah. So let's give both of those coaches a shout out. So your first coach was Joyce Wright. Joyce Wright. Woohoo. Yes, she is one. She is the head coach in my program. And then your current coach that you've been working with for what, a couple of years now, right? Three and a half already. We're going out. We're going to be going on four coming up. That's Mary Hanley. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Mary Hanley. And she is the chief revenue officer in my business, along with the uh, one of the master level coaches. And Mary has, like Dan said, she her own business is specializing in social media, but she's also an amazing coach. And um, I know um, from coaching with you periodically. I haven't coached with you consistently, but every once in a while we'll have a special coaching session, like a three hour VIP session or something. Um, one of the things that um, confidence, of course, kick in the butt, which, you know, sometimes you need a hug, right, Dan? Sometimes you need a hug, like from a mom. And sometimes you need that kick in the butt of, I believe in you. You've now it's time for you to believe in yourself and it's time to just do it. I know you're scared, but do it anyway. And that was, so how did that, 
gave me. <laughs> how did that feel when I said, Dan, I know you're scared. And how far were you in your VA business? And we're going to go all the way back to the beginning, but how far were you in your business? How many years had you been doing your business on the side while still working your full-time job? When I said, Dan, it's now or never. Yeah. Three and a half years, three, three and, and a half, half years. long years of <laughs> working multiple jobs. And it, you guys might be like, well, that seems mean that you did that, Kathy. But I knew, I knew his numbers. I knew his goals. And I knew what he really wanted to achieve. And, <laughs> and, and the only thing holding them back was his fear. Really, wasn't it, Dan? Really, look, in hindsight. Oh, completely. It was the fear. And I, I mean, Kathy had known about the fact that I needed to make X amount of money. And it wasn't even the fact that I needed to make the X amount of money. It was the fear behind not making the X amount of money where that fear was holding me back so much. And looking back at this now, I know it was, it was a facade that I put on because it's just that fear hat that you hold and just holds on to you so bad and you just you let it happen because you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what it's like on the other side until you actually experience it and once you get over that hump and I know many people have already heard this from many different people it's a totally different feeling once you're over that hump but it's actually as the podcast is daring to leap and actually doing it which is the hardest part. And once you're over that, there are other hurdles you go through, but nothing is. Oh really yeah. There's always that. the next level. Right. What, uh, what, what Jen Kim says next level, next devil, right? Correct. <laughs> but do you feel like your confidence muscle and your risk taking muscles have, have grown in strength? So that next level, next devil is easier to face and keep going through. Absolutely. I've, has been a lot of things that have already come up just from, from growing in the past. I mean, I left my job in August of last year during COVID. August of 2020 during COVID, you left your job. They didn't, they didn't release him. Nope. In fact, they, what doubled or tripled your responsibilities. They gave me, yeah, they gave me just about that much because they said, oh, you got two weeks. We're going to jam pack you full in two weeks to make sure that we get everything that we need regardless of whatever the time was. So I was working quite a bit of overtime at that point because they were like, nope, we need you to do everything before you're gone because once you're gone, yeah. we don't know what we're going to do. Right, right. Okay, so let's go back to the very beginning. Um, uh, five years ago, tell everybody how many jobs you had, how, how much time you were working and what made you decide, you know what? I already, yes, I already have this many jobs. I'm going to add on one more thing. <laughs> so I was in a corporate position that I was not really enjoying as much as I thought I would. I got promoted into the position because they knew that I had the ability to do it, but it just wasn't something that I wanted to do. So while making some good money, I was working to build um, the funds for our wedding because my fiance at that time, now my wife, we, we needed the funds to do that. So she used to work at a restaurant as well. And so I joined her at that on the side, working a couple nights a week and having a very awful time during the day at my, at my job and hated it. So my, now my sister-in-law, her best friend is actually in Kathy's program as well too, which is how I got to know Kathy um, said to me, you know what, you, you, you need a change, you need something. And, you know, and she knew that I wanted to work from home and she wanted, I wanted to have my own ability to control my life. So she referred me to Kathy and here we are. And I, we had a wonderful conversation that first time and really enjoyed it. And I knew that this is what I wanted to. And as much as all of these things that I had building up, just, it was going to be a lot. I said, you might as well try and do it because I kept seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel saying, this is going to work. This is going to work. This is going to work. And I really wanted it to work. And it was a very lot of work to do, to balance <laughs> out a 45 to 50 hour a week job working two nights, about 10 hours, 10 to 15 hours a week there. And then coming home late and 
building a business, not knowing yeah. anything about working a business and building it and figuring out what I wanted to do. And, oh, mm-hmm. but no, well worth everything. Okay. So let's summarize this. You had a full-time job where you were working 45 to 50 hours a week or, or right. more. It was usually it was and- usually. 45 and 50, 45 and 50. That was usual. Okay. I, I remember there were times when you're like, well, I it's like, and I don't remember if you actually said this, but it felt like mandatory overtime this week or, and I was like, what? And, and you were in the pharmaceutical industry, right? Correct. Yep. I was and working I saying at that correctly. long-term care pharmacy. So all the pharmacy for um, assisted living in nursing homes. Yeah. And um, then you also worked uh, as a server. Is that right? On the side at a restaurant. Right. 10 hours a night, did you say? Oh, 10 hours Two a nights week. a week? Two nights a week. Oh, 10 hours a week. I was like, 10 hours a night. How do you do that? Is that open overnight? Um, okay. So 10 hours a week mm-hmm. as a server. So you would leave your day job and then go do that. Or did you do the, the restaurant on the weekends? Oh, we did. We used to do Thursday and Friday nights because the Thursday weekend, and Friday night. So work all day long, then Thursday and Friday night, working 10, five hours ish each night doing that. Right. And then you said, you know what? I have big dreams and I know I can do more. Is that right? What, what were you thinking? I just didn't want to work at it. I just knew corporate was not for me. It, it's just the politics and the drama that comes with that. It was just not for me. And that's not who I am. And I, I try to live a very drama free life. I try to live a very, you know, calming as a creative. I just like to do my thing that I like to do. And I knew corporate was not for me. And I was kind of getting burnt out from working in pharmacy for so long that I just needed a change of something. And I didn't know what the change was. I just knew that this wasn't it. Yeah. And, you know, while it was a pharmaceutical industry, it's a corporate job, just like any other with those corporate politics with, you know, you don't get to choose what job you have necessarily because when they tell you, hey, this is your new job. Did they ever do something like that to you? Hey, here's what you're going to do now. And you're like, well, that's not really what I want to do. And they're like, well, take it or leave it. Did they do anything like that? Oh, yeah. All the time. The unfortunate thing was that I was very yes person always. And I just took on things. And because that's who I was, I, you know, I was up for a challenge. I was always up. They always knew that I was up for a challenge and that I could actually do the things. It's just something. That and that's they- a good thing, Dan. That's oh, what makes is- you good as an entrepreneur. Correct. That You're up for the challenge. And quite honestly, in the corporate world, if you say no, you're, you're either just going to be stuck right where you are forever, or, uh, as my boss used to say at, at my corporate job, don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> oh, believe me. They had a lot. Of Literally. People. That was what was said to me. <laughs> oh, we had a lot. We had a lot that said that, yeah, that said is don't let it hit you with a, with a good yeah. look. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Okay. So you're doing all of that work. How the heck did you fit in the time to do the training materials that, um, you know, you go through to learn how to build a business, how to become a virtual assistant, and then how to specialize and get your coaching time in. How did you, how did you time manage that? It was a lot to do that, but (laughs) you just have to find the time. So a lot of nights I worked a lot of late nights. Um, you know, I'd come home, we'd eat, and then my wife would unwind. My wife's a nurse at a school for kids with disabilities. So she'd come home. We're not even going to talk about the two other jobs that she had on top of that as well, too. <laughs> so between the two of us, we were working all the time. But we'd come home, we'd have dinner, and then I would start working right away. And some nights it was, you know, 8 to 1 a.m., get a little bit of sleep, go to work. And I mean, I was miserable at work already. So what difference did it make? I still got the work done. It didn't matter that mm-hmm. I took naps on all my breaks, but hey, <laughs> hey. I made everything work. And um, Dan, it sounds like your philosophy is I can do anything for a short period of time. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I've always uh, uh, message that has always resonated with me is um, to get what 
others don't have, you have to do what others aren't willing to do. And that's you, Dan, that really describes you. You've always been willing. You've always wanted what others don't have because most people have jobs that they don't care for. They, they don't enjoy their work and you didn't want to live that life. No, no, that was, and so you were willing to do what others weren't willing to do. Correct. And whatever it took, I had to do it because I knew there was a goal at the end of this and it was supposed to be for a short period of time. And I mean, three and a half years is still a short period of time in the long run on this because yes. I've seen and you've seen absolutely so many people go through years without ever getting to a goal that they're hoping for. Yeah. Um uh, you know, people that come to me who have uh, had their own business for 10 years and still aren't making a consistent monthly income, 10 years, uh, you started, how, how quickly did you begin? Well, let, let me ask this way. When did you get your first client? How quickly after you started the program, did you get your first client? Do you remember? It was within the first three months. I know that. It was, it yeah. was well within the first three months because I, once I made the decision of what I wanted to do, then it was, okay, let's go yeah. for it. It was within the first three yeah. months. I mean, right before I changed my, my niche over from the social media to the graphic design portion, I was making consistent over, I had four or five clients at that point. I was, oh, yeah. And when I finally said to myself that, this isn't really what I wanted to do again. Same. Mm-hmm. Thing. I was, mm-hmm. it wasn't that I wasn't enjoying it. It's just, it was right. some of the filler time in there was not some things that really was the passion that I had doing the graphics, making mm-hmm. these designs, mm-hmm. finding the right images and, and design strategy behind it. That resonates was really what, what I wanted to do. And you had said this from the get-go to me as well, too, that this is this was something that I should really consider doing solely. And as my usual self always said, I'm like, oh, I can, I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> but in the long run, listen to your coaches, because Mary said to me, too, she we were talking about social media one day, and she just looked at me, and she sat like this for a second, and she goes, you don't like what you do anymore, do you? And I said, not really. And she goes, all right, we're going to make this change right now. <laughs> and that was it. I let everybody go. You were my only one that I was still doing this for. I let everybody else go. And I started my business again from scratch, right up, let go. And that was really how I, I knew that I could do this because I had a consistent income coming in and said, okay, we're going to make this change. And go down to not having consistency again. Mm -hmm. And then built it back up because you knew how you knew how to uh, identify a new area you loved. You were already dabbling in it. So you're like, oh, yes, I've tried this. Mm, It's just okay. I want to love what I do. So this is what I'm loving. So you went in that direction. You released clients in a way that you didn't burn any bridges. Right, Dan? Did not. Everybody loves Dan. Now, you, it, I can't even imagine you burning a bridge. But um, I can burn you know, any it is... bridge that I want to, though. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and at what point in this process did you quit your uh, restaurant server job? I quit that within the first, uh, it was less than the year. I think it was like eight or nine months in, I was able mm-hmm. to just say, yep, I, I comped that complete income coming in, which was all tips at that point. And it was very easy to do that because the money was already there. And I was working less hours just from that alone to comp the tips mm-hmm. and not have to work the 10 hours there to make up. Yeah. So you were able to quit that job where you didn't have to go right after work to do that. You replace that income with your uh, virtual assistant, uh, social media Mm -hmm. uh, work that you were doing specialist, and you were still working your corporate job, all those like 50 hours a week. And then like what happens to everyone, but Dan had a, like a extreme whammy. You had some, uh, really 
a, a series of tragedies in your family. Yeah, the 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 year that I had hoped to leave my corporate job um, during that year, we lost six people in um, both my wife's and my family. And it made it, it was a very hard portion. And my mother-in-law was still um, suffering. She was, she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Oh, 20, oh, I, got, so I don't even remember how long it's been. It was so long. It, she made it five full years and before COVID. Wow. Um, so it was 2019. So at that point it was like 2014, she had, she had been diagnosed and we'd been going through all of this. And um, so between our two families, we lost six people. And then the year after she ended up passing away right before COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, so the, it was the year before, so it was 2018 when all this happened. And that was the year that I had planned on, on leaving my job because I was like, nope, this mm -hmm. is it. And then all of that happened and uh, plans got put on hold, but yeah. Getting put on hold was not relinquishing the dream. It just was, okay, this is not the right moment for this to happen. Yeah. And you still worked with your coaches. You mm -hmm. never gave up. Your coaches never gave up on you. Nope, never gave you, up. And that was really, I, I, I mean, my heart hurt for you so badly. And that was such a rough time for you and your, your wife and your family. Oh my goodness. It was and you guys, that was before COVID. I mean, we all kind of experienced almost that level during COVID, but this was before COVID. Mm -hmm. It was. And yeah. I, I, we had said before, we're like, not to, not to make humor out of this, but we had to make some sort of humor at that point. Yeah, because we're going to through survive. So we just kept saying, well, I'm so tired of seeing the funeral home. Like they, we almost yeah. said they're going to start knowing us by name now. And it was, it was, but yeah. no, and then so sad. The, and then in 2019, my, my mother-in-law passed away. Um, she, she had fought a long battle on that, but mm -hmm. without knowing that COVID was coming, um, it was, it was such a blessing that she didn't have to experience that because I, we didn't even know what would have happened if she would have been here during COVID just to see that. And I thank, I th I'm so thankful that she wasn't here as much as it, it, it really hurt. My wife was, was suffered for a long time with that. And um, it took months before she was like at, at what I would refer to as some sort of normality. Cause obviously there's never a normality with that, but oh, yeah. then COVID hit. And then she was, she, we all just looked at each other. We're like, thank God she was not here for that because I you know, wouldn't have, wouldn't have, right. wouldn't have happened. Right. And, and Dan, uh, believe me, um, my husband, and I were thankful for the same thing because we lost his mother um, like two years before COVID. And we just kept saying, oh, thank God she wasn't here through COVID because it's horrible to lose somebody. We, you never get over losing your mom. But to know that they didn't have to experience uh, while they were sick, the horrendousness of not being able to see people during COVID and all that. It is a blessing. It is yes. a blessing. 100%. So what would you tell people when they're like, how did you survive through that and then come out the other side? You just have to keep putting one foot forward and just believing in the dreams that you really have and not letting the, the, the things that are trying to stop you get in your way. So that stopped, but it didn't stop the dream. It just pushed. It said, okay, this is not at this point where it needs to. And I just, we just shifted it a little bit more. And I mean, when I talked with Mary, we said, we're going to shift it a year and let's see. And we started at six months and we were like, nope, we're going a year. And mm -hmm. it took, it took that point. And then after when my mother-in-law passed away, then we said, nope, this isn't it yet. And then COVID hit and I got mm -hmm. sent home from my corporate job they I was yeah, the first to one work in, from home I was the first one in our in our building that I was the first one that they did the test with to see how everything would work because adaptability here said I'll take the I'll take it because I knew what it was you already our, had yourself set up yep, to work from home yep I was good so I'm like you can give it right to me and I was the first one and I was loving it because I was able to balance two things at once and get everything done because I was still working my corporate job. But in between certain things that I was able to, I was able to get some client work in there done. Yeah, you could more easily time manage everything working from home. 
Mm -hmm. Mm. It was wonderful. That makes total sense. And And you got to experience what it was really like to only work from home and be in charge of your own time. And what was that experience like? The best was the best experience ever (laughs) until July of 2019, when they called me and they told me you have to come back because I was the only one at that point that they could trust to be in the office um, to handle. It was July 2020, right? Yep. July of 2020. Year, July 2020. Yep. They asked me. You to, have to come me. back. I, I, I remember back. talking to you. They're making me come back. And I'm like, mm, time to quit. Time to quit. Yep. And but uh, you didn't want to get, you didn't want, you wanted to help them. I remember you saying they need my help. At I that want point, to give I, them my help. I knew that it was, it was something I had to do. Not that I really, I mm-hmm. didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But right. I also knew that if I didn't go back, they were going to fire me. Cause that's what I was basically told. Let you go. Right. Because you have to come back. Yeah. And, and by the way, that's what a lot of people have been experiencing um, uh, we're recording this July, 2021, um, <clears throat> the biggest, uh, I think ever series of people just quitting their jobs because they're like, you're making me come back to work. No, nope, not won't happen. I've realized I don't like that job <laughs> because I've had a little time off or I've been able to work from home. And that's kind of what happened to you. You went back and then went, Oh, you, well, what happened when you went back? How did that feel? And what, what made you go? Oh Yeah. Well, I was the same happened. I was so in in my role uh, as one of the leads on the floor. Um, we had five of us, and I was the only one that was told to go back. And I fought it very much because I said, "I don't, I don't see the fairness in this." Mm-hmm. And they just said, "Well, that's too bad." And so mm-hmm. I went back. I ran myself ragged because I was the only contact point for everybody there. And it came to the point. How many where, hours were you working a week at the um, job then? At that point, I think I think we were close to like fifty-five to sixty at some yeah, point. You were working a lot of hours. It, I, it was there, and then the work was still there, so I had to come home and do work. So my and do business, your business? Yeah. Well, no, not even fully at that point. I was still doing some work home, and then come home after the oh. home work and do business. Oh my gosh. So you would do your corporate job in the corporation. You would come home and do more corporate work and do your business. Correct. And I remember having a zoom session with you and I saw you physically. And I was like, Dan, you, your physical health is deteriorating. I mean, I could see it. And could you feel it? How were you feeling? I was not the same person that I was. Uh, it, no. was the, it was the lowest that I had ever been. And I, I thought when I first joined the program, that was the lowest that I ever went. And it wasn't. This was the lowest that I had ever been. So you really yeah. hit bottom. You hit yeah. bottom. Very, very bottom. <laughs> and, and, then what did you, and then what happened? And then what did you do? Well, and then we got on a call together and you kind of spilled it all out for me the way that I needed to hear it. And as you said, most people would probably think it was, it was a harsh, but it wasn't harsh. It was the truth that I needed to hear. It was the push you needed. It was the push. And it was the time. It was finally the time and I couldn't do it. And the day that I went into the office and I gave my notice and they knew right away because I walked in Everybody was there and I took the envelope out and they looked and they said, uh, and I I handed it in and we said, okay, we have work to do. And I left the office. It literally felt like 300 pounds of weight lifted off of me. And I felt amazing. Those last two weeks sucked, but I put up with it and I put up with everything they threw up because you know what? I said, I, you got two weeks and that's it. That's right. And my last day there was, was emotional because I worked with a lot of people for a long time and they knew me and they knew everything. And it was tough for that. But the day I, the moment that I left and walked out of that job, I have never felt better physical, mental, emotional than ever. 
And then it was funny because I had to get on, I had to get on a call and I think it was, I think it was with you and a couple of the people as well. And you all cheered me when I got on the That's call. Right. That's right. And, and di- I, didn't you get a bottle of champagne from some of us? I got a bottle of champagne <laughs> from my three coaches. You, right. Joyce and Mary all sent me a bottle of champagne to toast that. And it was, it was amazing to get that in the mail and to, to get that and just say it was the belief that you all had in me from day one. And I've been so thankful for that. Yeah. And so really your biggest fear was letting go of that, even though it was a challenging job as a, a job you knew, even though it wasn't as much money as you wanted to make, it was still a nice income, right. kind of those golden handcuffs, right? basically. Yeah. And yeah. And then you needed to make X amount of money and you were like, okay, um, I need to make that within, was it 90 days that you needed to make a certain amount of money a month? Have that yeah. coming in to be able yeah. to pay bills and stuff. We came up with a plan. Um, and I, and, and the plan was the 90 day plan. Now the, the, the beauty of this is that I walked out of that corporate job with four weeks of vacation that I hadn't taken. So I, banked on that. And so I had a month. That's of right. Income. You had that. I had a cushion. Yeah. Which that was, was my, awesome. That, that gave you that cushion that made you feel comfortable, which Correct. I love. Correct. It was. And I held on to that because I knew that I, I suffered through a lot of times where I wish I would have taken some days off, but I knew that cushion was going to be there and it came in clutch at that one moment. And right. so I had a whole month of income knowing, and I said, okay, so now I don't have to stress about a month of income. I just need to stress about the next 90 days of where is the rest of the money coming from. And within how long did it take you to replace your income? uh, Two weeks, basically, it took me to replace. (laughs) And I know you were surprised. None of me, Mary, Joyce, none of us were surprised at all. But I know you were surprised. You're like, oh my gosh, it's already happened. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks of working (laughs) For myself, I had replaced that just, and it, that's all I cared about was that I just wanted to replace that. And it was so easy to do. And from then on, I said, okay, so now the dream begins and the dream has continued. Yeah. And um, talk a little bit about the support that you get from your wife, because that was not what was holding you back. Like some people have, uh, spouses or significant others or parents or best friends who are like, you can't leave your job. That's what I had. You can't leave that good, good, good job. You didn't really have that. Your wife is incredibly supportive, right? My wife. I mean, she was very concerned about the fact of where's the money. That's all she said. She said, I, she said, I believe in you. I know you can do this. All I care about is that we don't foreclose on the house and we can pay our bills. And that's all that we really needed to do. And I said, this is the plan that I have in place. And she said, okay, we're going to do this. And uh, she was scared. Shitless, basically, is the nicest, you know, excuse my French, but <laughs> that's the nicest it's way. It's a I podcast, can you can cuss. Yeah, I know, but that's the nicest way I can put it. And it really yeah. was not that long afterwards. When Once the two weeks happened and she saw the money cut was already there. And she was like, okay, all right, we got this. Yeah. She's like, okay. <laughs> All right. And she she said, I knew you could do this 100%. I knew you could do this. And everybody knew you could, everybody knew I could do this. And my mother was always, you've got incredible talent. Number one, you have incredible talent. Number two, you have incredible tenacity and, and three grit and your personality, just everybody wants to be around you and work with you. And Dan, you really care about your clients' businesses as if they were your own, don't you? Correct. Correct. Because I can't go into any position, any business and not give the amount that I would give if it was my own. And that's me, but that's how I've, that's how I've been raised. That's how I've, I've gone through life. I've never, ever gone to a point, even on those last two weeks there where I could have said, deal with it. I still gave my hundred and ten percent because that's it's 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 not about it's not about 
what you've been through. It's just about who you are as a person. And as a person, I can't not give that 110% and just say, oh, the hell with it. But no, that's not, that's not how I do things. Mm -mm. It's not you at all. I know. And one of the things that I love, um, well, number one, I love that you treat my business as if it were your own. I love that. And not just mine, but I don't even know who your other clients are because you treat me as if I'm the only client that matters. And I know you do that with every client you have. And I love that. Um, And you have gotten to know me and my style of working, (laughs) which is very last minute. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Which isn't a good thing, but it is me. Um, and so oh. rather than say to me, hey, this last minute stuff isn't going to work for me, you said, hey, I know you are kind of a last minute person. So I'm going to set aside the time when you have this last minute stuff that I know is coming up. I'm going to set aside the time so I can get it done for you. And Dan, that is so amazing that you modify your work style based on the needs of your clients. That's just amazing. That's how you know you, when you know your clients and you know who you're working with, it, it's, it's a, it's a no brainer to me. That was an easy no brainer because I know, and it does, it's never bothered me because I know. And as long as I know what it is and I can work around it and I personally can work around it and have no problems that it's fine for me. I know other people might not be able to do that, but that's that mm-hmm. adaptability that I've had since day one of everything that I've done is you don't, I mean, I could complain and I could say no, or I could charge you more, but that's not how this works. It's that I, it's, it's giving my best work when I know that you're going to be able to give me your best work. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I am, I, I have no brand design, no design. I whatsoever I know what I like when I see it, but I couldn't possibly even begin to tell you what it is I would want. So um, it's amazing because it's almost like Dan has gotten into my brain and my brand and knows what I want more than I know what I want. It's like he's reading my mind of uh, what the most amazing looking thing could possibly be that would be my brand. Yeah. (laughs) Dance, <laughs> dance, doo, 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 doo. right now if you're not watching the video you're hilarious so how do you do that dan really is it just innate for you or what you know how do you this, how do you work with clients to to learn all of that well i get to know who they are first because that's number one is once i know who you are and what your style is then it's easier to kind of adapt to that i so i've gotten to know you very well i know what your core values are i know who you are as a person. So I know what your business is. So taking all of those things into there and saying, okay, this is the concept that you want. Cause you're not, you don't care. You hold on. Let me rephrase that. It's not that you don't care, but you don't have the worry about saying, well, it needs to look exactly like this. It needs to be this. All that matters is this is the output that I want. And you tell me with your expertise, what that output should look like. And we go through a few different things. And then I think we've only had one time where we had to go back and revise anything more than once. One time. Yeah, because- absolutely. You guys, it, it, that is true. And I have worked before I met Dan, I've had my business since 2001. So before I met Dan, I did go through other graphic designers and, you know, we would go back and forth, back and forth because I can't tell you what I want. I only know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I'm not an easy person to work with because of that. But Dan always exceeds my expectations. So Dan, let's talk a little bit. I'm a business coach and trainer. So I know that's one of the type of clients you love to work with. Who else Mm -hmm. are your ideal clients? Talk a little bit about that. My ideal clients fall in the coaches, speakers, and trainers realm. Um, it's, It's been very easy to work with like-minded people. And that's really where the, this comes from is that, you know, after working with you in the start and working with other coaches, I just know that it's easier for me to relate more to people that I've already worked with very well. And I've never had one person that I've come forth and said, Oh no, I can't work with them. 
other, it's not just business coaches. It's I've had all types of coaches, life coaches, um, uh, personal development coaches that have come through me. And it's all, it's a similar platform. It's just adapting to who they are as a person and their realm of the business. And everybody, all of my clients that have come through, I mean, I've enjoyed working with every single one of them. And, um, yeah, I've worked with and many I've seen different... your work. I've oh. seen your work and your work for different clients is totally different than your work for me. Correct. So you absolutely delve into each client's values and who their clients are and what they want things uh, the feel they want. And you just nail it every time. I mean, I, I know you shared a couple of times with me in the past. Hey, I did this brochure. I did this, whatever you did for them. And they loved it the first go around. And mm-hmm. of course they did because you, and it looked totally different than what you did for me. Correct. Everybody's style is a little bit different, but everybody's mm-hmm. values that, that need to shine through. And that's really who you have. Your brand and your business is you. You're the face. Mm-hmm. Your business is is everything. So that's mm-hmm. where I go straight forth. Yeah, you really get the spirit of what I'm trying for. I, I, that's the word that keeps coming to my mind. Is you get the spirit of it, and then you just go and do. So talk about some of the things that you design, and just you know name off. You know what do you love oh. to design for coaches, speakers, and trainers? What haven't I designed is basically what I <laughs> So name uh, some so people can get a so feel. I've for done, it. I've done all, I've done all sorts of social media images, Heather's logos and branding. I've done Facebook ads. I've done Instagram ads, um, PowerPoint presentations. I mean, I did, I, I, for Kathy alone, I did all of the design work for her virtual and live events. And those are the, are absolutely the most fun um, designs that you because we have themes. Correct. I have a different theme for each event, and all Dan knows is the theme, and of course he knows my brand and my spirit, my values, and he created like three. It was a three day event. I'm going to talk about the most recent one because it was so amazing what you did. It was a three day event. He created, and it was um, Wizard of Oz theme. He created a different a PowerPoint. Um, deck designed for each day so that it focused on what we, you know, each day was a different uh, topic that we were covering. And so he had something for each day that still all fit the theme. And to get everybody excited beforehand, we had a Facebook group where people work and tell what you designed uh, for people to work on in that. So we had coloring pages for each one. Um, And the third day was the most important day. Um, because we we took Linda the Good Witch and we put Kathy's face on it and it was <laughs> the best and everybody enjoyed that that one the most um, and I got so many people but, asking me how did you do that and all I said is it's amazing magic. I don't know how you do anything you do it is magical it's so magic. we had we had coloring pages that Dan designed based on my logo, my brand, and the Wizard of Oz theme. And it was very inspirational. Um, And Dan not only created these from scratch, he came up with the ideas. I didn't have the ideas. He knew my brand and knew Wizard of Oz. And that was it. He came up with it, shared them with um, my event coordinator, who's Mary Henley, and me. And I loved everything. I'm like, yes, not one change. Go do and he uploaded them into the Facebook group and oh, it was just awesome. So you did the coloring pages, you did the PowerPoints for me, you did flyers about all the services and products I was selling for right. the theme. And then the big one, um, we, we can't forget mm-hmm. the big one, the swag box. What's the big one? Oh yeah. The, and he also, we, we gave away swag boxes and you, uh, helped design and develop and choose the items for that swag box. Correct. Yep. And <coughs> excuse me for first, that the first, theme. The first year we did it, it was, it was very interesting because we didn't, we didn't know what we were getting into at that point. And then we had to up level from that first one. And a lot of people said, there's no way that you could, you could beat that one. I didn't think you could make a better swag box than the first one. And, and I don't think we can make a better swag box than the one we just did for Wizard of Oz, but I'm always surprised because <laughs> you always do. You always do. 
Oh, I see. It's it's just like you said, it's encompassing the spirit behind the event and knowing how many people come into that event, look forward to that event and know that we know the swag box is coming. So now people look forward to the swag mm-hmm. box and want to buy the swag box. So now it's all about how can we top the next one and really keep everybody focused in on what the event is all about. And that's that it's the learning and the collaboration together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you also do um, like for the event, for example, for my sales page for the event, you did the imagery for that. Right. Yeah. So anything that needed graphic design for my event, Dan <laughs> did it. And then of course my ongoing website, uh, we're actually re rebranding, slightly rebranding up leveling everything right now. And Dan's going to be working with my marketing person to get all new designs for my um, evergreen websites and stuff. So, um, and it's awesome because I don't have to worry about it. I literally just told the marketing guy, uh, work with Dan, you guys, whatever you decide to do, I know I'll love it. And that's that's so easy. I don't have to worry about it. I know I'm going to love, I know I'm going to be dazzled myself by the end design and go, Oh, but so much, I wouldn't have thought of it. I love it. <laughs> and, and the one thing I can also say is that for people out there that like to have a hand in on everything, because you, you're, you as one person, you, you're, you're a hands-off person. Like, I you am tell very me hands-off. What you like to do for people that aren't, because I've worked with a few that aren't a hands-off person and they like to be involved in things. It's not about giving a hands-off. It's more about a co-creation together where you kind of help say, what are you looking for in your design? And as long as you can kind of, and it doesn't have to be words. Um, actually, on my website, there, I have a, I have a um, a fly um, a lead magnet out there that that gives you a little PDF to say how to talk to a graphic designer and get out your your thoughts on that. And there are multiple ways to do that, so you don't have to always worry about writing things down in a way that you think the usual way, there are so many other ways that you can express your feelings behind the design that you're looking for. And for hands-off people, that's about the co-creation portion. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Dan, because yeah, most people aren't as hands-off as, as I am. And I mean, mainly I am because I just trust you so much. <laughs> I, love I know if I give any opinion on it, it's going to probably mess up the process because I, no, I don't know no. design. I don't, I don't think it, I don't, I wouldn't consider it a mess up. I would consider it more as a, as an extra thought process to put into it. It's never mm-hmm. a mess up because you, as, as the client yourself, your input mm-hmm. on certain things is very important to me as well, too. And I love a hands off because you kind of just get to, you get the free range and you know the person, but for people that right. like to co-create, I love that too, because I get to have some of your feelings added to that as well too right oh i love that uh, uh, that's amazing okay so one other thing i want to mention is the name of your business is my marketing va and that's your url right my marketing va.com yes. so if anybody wants to get in wants to see some of dan's designs you can go there you can contact him there right and you can download that pdf he just mentioned yes. on how to work with a graphic designer there we'll have that link in the show notes Okay. Um, but I wanted to mention that it's called My Marketing VA because other graphic designers I've worked with, they'll do the graphic design, but they don't really think about the marketing piece of it. You actually think about not just the design, but how it's going to help with marketing. Correct. It's it's not just a one and done with the design. There's so many elements behind it. And that's where the strategy of the design itself comes into play is because how else can you market your business? with using the design that you already have. So you got to keep everything cohesive across the board and having that marketing portion behind that and the strategy really helps keep people coming to your website as well, but also flowing through all of your other portions. So all of your social media, anything that you're offering, videos and podcasts that you have, everything collaboratively goes together. Yeah. And I thought of two more things that you've, um, that you create for people. One t-shirt designs. You did yes. those for me, t-shirts, sweatshirts, you know, apparel that's, I know it's more swag, but it, the t-shirts weren't in the swag oh, box. and logos. You do logos, right? Yes. Logos in the branding. Yes. Um, I did yeah. not do Kathy's. 
I did not. No, because I had that done when Dan was brand new before he was really into graphic design. But we've adapted yours into a into quite a few different areas as well that we yeah. Could. Yeah, he he really knows how to incorporate it. Um, so all right, Dan, if somebody's saying, Oh my gosh, I want to talk to this guy to see if he can help me, how do they get in touch with you? What's the best way? For them to connect with you? Well, I can do two ways. So you can go to my website and there's a contact page on there that'll get sent right to me. And then we can schedule a call. Um, the other way to do that is outside of email. Um, you can email me at dan at my marketing va.com, or you can go to my Instagram page, which is probably the one of the easier ways to do this and send me a DM um, on there. And, and then we can talk a little bit more because I'm, I'm, I'm active on all of, uh, all of my social media, but the Instagram is very active. Um, and so I, I do like to talk with people there too, but we can schedule calls all around, whichever way works best. Whatever works for, for you. And Instagram, what, how do they, what's the Instagram link? Do you oh, know, or Instagram we can just put handle, all this no, in the show? My Instagram handle is my marketing VA. Cool. So it's, it's, uh, are all your social media, my marketing VA? Yes. Yes. There you go. Can't be easy, easier easy. than that. <laughs> <laughs> and in case you haven't noticed the accent dan you want to share with people where you are and maybe give us a little taste of the extreme accent that a lot of people ask you to share <laughs> so i am um I, i'm in massachusetts um i was a rhode island born um native uh and i migrated away uh, my wife is is from a town and it's called norwood in mass um it's about 25 minutes outside of boston so I have kind of made the, the connection between the Rhode Island and the Boston accent together. Um, we say wicked a lot. Um, that's, that's the best part to car in Harvard Yard. You know, we do all that. Got to have, got to have my coffee. <laughs> oh yeah. You're, you're a big coffee lover. If anybody ever is like wonder, there he is right there. He's got my coffee. iced coffee today. Yeah. Oh, so uh, I'm a true, true New, Eng- true New England person. I drink iced coffee all year round. There is no, not a time. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing in New England. Well, okay. When I, well, everybody, cause it, it could be negative 25 degrees out and most New Englanders have a nice coffee cause that's the way it is. If I make a coffee in my house, it is a hot coffee. When I go out to purchase coffee, it is always a nice coffee. I love it. Well, let's wrap on that. Dan, thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. Thank you very much, Kathy, for having me on here. You know, I adore you and um, I, I just love working with Back you. Back at so you. I'll, uh, my business wouldn't be where it is today without you. Neither would mine. So you that <laughs> the same way. <laughs> Mutual admiration society here. Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. Bye, Thanks. everybody. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. (laughs) 